There are three ways to move a 3D object in Photoshop. One uses something called the cage, another one uses the widget, and the third one lets you use numeric values. I'm going to show you how to use the cage in this lesson. I'll show you how to use the widget and numeric values in other lessons. So let's start off by going to Working Files and opening up Photoshop Projects and opening up Move Cage. We've got our familiar wine bottle here along with a 3D model that we're going to work with in just a bit. Let's start off with the wine bottle here. I've got the wine bottle active and I want to move the wine bottle around, not the ground plane, but the bottle itself. So the first order of business is to get the move tool selected. I can press V to do that. It's up here, of course, but I can press the shortcut V to get it active. When I do that, all these 3D things pop on. And by default, the wine bottle is active. The cage is around the wine bottle. You can tell it's a cage because of the thick lines that go around it, the rectangle that goes around the wine bottle. Now, it's not just a rectangle. It's a rectangular solid. It actually surrounds the entire 3D object and allows you to manipulate the object by using the cage. Now, if I hover my cursor inside it, you'll see that it's a context-sensitive cursor. It changes the shape of the cursor and gives you little tooltips to tell you what you can do. Right there in the edge, it says I'm moving along the YZ plane. Y goes up and down, Z goes back and forward. Go a little bit farther to the left, just a little bit, and it says rotate around the Y axis. Now the Y axis is up and down, right? Go to the inside, I'm moving on the Z axis so I can push it away or pull it toward me. If I go a little bit farther to the left, I'm moving it around the Y axis again, and again, I'm moving it on the YZ plane. So these things allow you to do all kinds of things depending on where the cursor is. If I'm outside the cage, then it takes on whatever move tool I've got selected here. Right now I've got the drag tool selected, which means if I click outside here, I can drag it around in the XY plane, this flat plane that faces us, without having to put my cursor inside here. So I can just move it around like so. It's not the camera tool that's moving around here, it's the 3D object that's moving around using the move tool outside of the cage. I'm moving the cage here by clicking outside it while the cage is active. If I click again and take my finger off the mouse, that selects the camera tool, and now I'm going to move the ground plane around. That's different. So I'm going to click inside here again to make it active, and now the cage is active. I want to rotate it so you get a better sense of the 3D nature of this. I'm going to go to the edge here. I want to get the rotator on the y-axis active. and I'll just drag it. Now you can see, ah, there's this rectangular solid that surrounds the object. Now if you think about this cage as a box that's just sitting on the ground, then you can intuitively figure out how you can move it around. Right now when I hover over this, this plane here is active. If I go over here, this plane is active. So this plane being active here, if I push on it, I'm going to push it sort of back into the left here like that. There we go. If I pull on it, I'm going to pull it here forward to the right. Same thing over here. If I hover over here, you can see I've got this side of the box active. If I push it, it's going to go back to the right. If I pull it, it's going to come forward to the left. That's kind of the intuitive thing. How about lifting it up and down? That's not quite so intuitive. I'm going to go down to the bottom here, right at that intersection. I'm now selecting basically the bottom plane, the ZX plane. If I lift that up, I can lift it up like so. If I move it this way, it's actually getting smaller because it's going back on the Z axis away from the camera, away from the viewer. If I want to rotate it along, let's say, the x-axis, x is this red thing, z is the blue thing, red, green, and blue, R, G, B, X, Y, Z, that's how you can remember the colors. And we're going to deal with a widget in the next lesson. Let me go down here a little bit. I hover right there, I rotate around the z-axis, that's the blue one. Now, it's not going to rotate along the bottom, as you might think, it's going to rotate around this widget. So I go down here, it rotates on the z-axis. If I want to rotate on the x-axis, I go over here. Right there. there you go. Sometimes it might be more intuitive to have it rotate right at the bottom where you're pulling it, but it's going to rotate around that widget. If I want to rotate on the y-axis, then again, I just go to this edge over here. Rotate it that way. If I go outside it again, I can change the tools. I can go to this rotate tool like that, and just hold on the mouse button without lifting it up, and I can rotate it around all directions, like so. I change to the roll tool. It's going to behave a little bit differently. Just like the roll tool is used to the ground plane, just rotates on some distant thing there in the center of the screen. Go over here and click on the drag tool. Now it's going to go basically left and right in the XY plane. Click on the slide tool, it's going to go basically left and right, but it's going to go backwards and forwards as well, not going to be stuck in the XY plane like that. And the scale tool works basically the same way, forward or back. So that's how you use the cage to move an object around. Let's take a look at a third-party model and see how things are just a little bit different when you work with a model. I'll turn off the wine bottle, go down to this little cheeseburger here, put it on a plate. Well, the shadow looks kind of rough. That's typical when you work with diffuse shadows like this. They don't look so good until you render them. I've rendered it just a little bit here to make it sort of diffuse, but it can look better if I render it for a longer period of time. But we're going to take it like that for now. This is a 3D model provided to us by TurboSquid for our use in this tutorial, not as an asset, but just as something we can use. Let me show you the web page for this. 
That hamburger was made by Abrams Design, and this is the display of all the 3D models that Abrams Design sells on TurboSquid. And we're using this little guy here. Let's take a look at that. If you look at the hamburger here inside the 3D panel, you see it has all sorts of things going on here. What we have here are meshes. Each of these little icons represents a mesh. A mesh basically is an object within an object. With this one 3D model, there are eight meshes. In other words, eight individually selectable items inside this 3D model, which is pretty cool. It can get a little cumbersome though if you want to move them all around at once. It's a little bit easier to work over here in the mesh side of things inside the 3D panel. So I click on that. That just shows the meshes without the rest of the material showing up. Let's say I want to slide the hamburger patty out of there. So I select the hamburger and now it puts a cage around it like that. If I hover my cursor over the end here, it says move on the Y axis. Now this really doesn't make any sense. This would be the Z axis if I'm going to push it back or bring it forward. It's Y because some models are built sort of askew. They don't necessarily match our view of the X, Y, Z coordinates. They are turned or whatever. So this one is turned on its side basically, but you just need to think of it intuitively. If I hover there, that means I'm going to pull it toward me or push it away. So I'll pull that hamburger patty out and there it is. Pretty wild, huh? If I want to lift up that top bun, for example, I can click on the bun top, lift it up by just going over to the top like that, lifting it up. But look what happens to the seeds. Whoa, they disappear. So let's deal with those guys. I'm going to do Control or Command Z to undo that move. Now I want to grab the seeds and the bun. So I do Control or Command click on the seeds. Control and Windows Command on Mac. Now they're both selected. So that box there, that cage is now working for both of them. I hover over the top, which means I can lift it up or push it down. Now they're both working together like so. And I can do that for each of these layers. So when you work with a 3D model, just be aware that sometimes it might be tipped in a different direction than you might expect. And also you can work with each of these meshes individually or you can select all of them and work with them as a group. So let's just say I go top to bottom here, click on this first one, shift click on the last one. Now they're all selected. I can move them all at once like this. Over to the side, rotate them all, what have you. So there you go. That's how you use the cage to move and rotate a 3D object.